Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey there, Heartbeat Christine, Heartbeat Yvonne, Heartbeat Belinda. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you guys. Happy Wednesday, happy Wisdom Wednesday, Wholeness Wednesday. Hey, Heartbeat Eva, Heartbeat Elaine, and Heartbeat Donald. Good morning. Hey, Heartbeat Rodney and Heartbeat Carolyn. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you all. Welcome to the Gathering of Hearts on this morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the Heart Gatherer. And this morning, your daily dosage is a continuation from Monday. Hey, Heartbeat Melodia and Heartbeat Yolanda. I want a heart that forgives part three. I want a heart that forgives part three. Hey there, Heartbeat Sabrina. And so on yesterday, we pretty much squashed and we silenced and deleted the thought of possibly having limited forgiveness. We went through that that's not biblical. We cannot be that way, that we have to switch our brain. And let me tell you, I could feel the stairs through the stream. Like you all were like, Pastor G, really, really? Pastor G didn't say it. The Jesus, the Christ said it. He says unlimited forgiveness. He says not hardly seven, seven times 70, which means there is no limited forgiveness that we cannot be emotional bookkeepers. We cannot keep score. We cannot remind somebody that you said that the last time you did that. So we have definitely got to switch our brain and be like Peter, Lord Jesus, Holy One of Israel, Redeemer, you going to have to increase my faith. Amen. But we can do it because we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. And so although we are used to holding grudges or, you know, I'll, you know, have that relationship at long distance or we'll say, oh, I'm not mad anymore, but you know, we just, we're just not like we used to be. We We've got to switch our brains and we've got to have unlimited forgiveness. Amen. And so um, the great thing about it is this, that if you ask God to increase your faith, the good thing is that he will. And so here's why we need to make a, a good conscious effort to have a heart that um, a heart that forgives. So when I think about um let me see if I can use this rope here. When I think about um, unforgiveness, I'm going to do a rope analogy. And some of you have seen this uh, before, so I'm just going to use it again. Um, when you have a rope, when you are um, in unforgiveness and you refuse to come out of it, this is what unforgiveness looks like. It's like you're continuously just taking a rope and you're just, you know, going round and round and round because you won't let it go. But what happens here, the tighter that you pull a rope, the rope begins to cut through the skin, which does what? It leaves an open wound. And so if that wound is open, so just imagine that all of the things that you've gone through that you haven't forgiven somebody, it's like a rope and it's just going tighter and tighter and tighter and you know the tighter that you pull a rope at some point it's going to start cutting through your skin which means now you have an open wound which means now you have um, left that wound open for bitterness you've left that wound open for resentment anger brokenness and all the other negative emotions that go with it versus doing what God says not being an emotional bookkeeper forgiving the person letting go so when you let go the cord, the rope is no longer wrapped around you, which means what? I have no cuts. I have no blisters. I have no bruises. I have no infections. Most importantly, I have no brokenness and I'm not operating in unforgiveness. And so we've got to let it go because when we hold on to unforgiveness, it's like having a rope around you. And the, the more you hold on to it, the tighter the rope gets. And eventually it's going to cut your skin. So this is what happens when we let it go, um, this is what happens when we set the offender free. Amen. Set the offender free. You become free. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're no longer caged in bondage, which means you can live freely. You're no longer controlled by your emotions, which is a good thing. Some of you are holding unforgiveness in your heart, even against someone 
who has gone on to glory. They don't even know that you're holding unforgiveness. They are free and it's time that you be free too. I'm going to say that again. There are some people that are watching me this morning that are holding unforgiveness in their heart towards someone who has gone on to glory. They are free. And it's time that you be free too. Where God is taking you in this next phase of your life, unforgiveness has got to be gone. You've got to have a heart that forgives. It is unforgiveness that is clogging up the arteries in your heart for you to receive the blessings that God has for you. You have got to have a desire, a heart that forgives. Again, that rope an analogy is real. The longer you hold on to it, the tighter it gets around your heart. It causes your heart to be stony and we don't want a stony heart. We want God to ask, we want to ask God to give us a new heart. And so here are some steps to having um, a heart that forgives because where God is taking you, there is no room for the stony heart that you're carrying. It's too heavy and you need to be free that you might experience all the things that God has for you. And so the first step to um, having a heart that forgives is this, make a quality decision that I want to forgive, that I want a heart that forgives because it's up to you and it's for you and it's not for the other person. You staying in the state of unforgiveness and you've heard, you guys have heard me say this before. It's like you drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. It's not going to happen. The person is going on with their life, but you've got to go on with yours too. Understanding that God gives us brand new mercy every single day. So every day that you wake up, it's an opportunity to get your heart aligned with God. And so today is that day. Release the offender. Release that person now that you may enjoy all of the things that life has to offer you from God. And so Ephesians 3, 2, and I'm going to read the Passion Translation. And it says this, but instead be kind and affectionate towards one another. And so if we're going to be affectionate and kind towards one another, we've got to forgive one another. And I know somebody is sitting on the opposite side of the screen saying, Pastor G, you don't know what they did to me. You have no idea the agony that it caused. And you would be right about that. I don't know. I don't know how you feel, but I know that Jesus Christ knows how you feel. And I know that he wants to set you free. I know that he does not want you broken anymore. He says that he's close to the brokenhearted. So it is time, no matter how much agony you went through, no matter what they did to you, Jesus loves you and he does not want you to stay in this state that you're in. And because you are a citizen of the kingdom of God, the power to forgive is on the inside of you. You've just got to let the spirit work, shut the flesh down that the spirit may move in your life. Getting back to the scripture, it says, but instead be kind and affectionate towards one another. Has God graciously forgiven you? Then graciously forgive one another in the depths of Christ's love. Think about that. If Christ has forgiven you and you know what you've done, you know the things that you participated in, you know how when the spirit was telling you, don't do that, let it go, you had to seek revenge anyway. You know some of the things that you thought and Christ, for, he forgave you. And so it's time now that you extend that grace Grace to whomever it is that needs forgiveness from you. It's simple. You can do it. Do not allow the flesh to continuously control you. God is doing a new thing in your life, but he needs to get rid of the old stuff, the old stuff, the baggage, the weight that was stopping you from moving forward. He has come into your space on this morning to say, let it go. And so you've got to learn how to let it go. It does not matter what they've done. Allow God to handle that. Allow God to heal the broken pieces of your heart. Allow God to take you past your now. You've been here too long. You know what this feels like, right? So allow God to mend the broken pieces of your heart that you may feel what freedom feels like, where you will feel what peace feels like, that type of peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Getting back to where I was, it says this, it says, then graciously forgive one another in the depths of Christ's love. In Christ's love, not yours, not the way you love, but in the depths of Christ's love. And here's how Christ loves. I'm going to look at 1 Corinthians, the love chapter. And it says this, love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle 
and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievement nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not irritated or quick to take offense. Love, joyful, jo mm, love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. It says that love doesn't quickly take offense. And so if we're operating in the depths of Christ's love that Ephesians 4.32 speaks of, then we don't take offense easily. We don't find delight in what is wrong. We don't sit back and wish something bad would happen to them because they did us wrong. Getting back in the scripture, it says love is a safe place of shelter for it never stops believing the best for others. And so although they've done you wrong, love continuously believes the best about them. And so you just look at it another way. Maybe they were having a bad day. Maybe something is off with them. I know you're probably saying, but I'm supposed to catch that. No, you're not. When you switch your brain, Jesus got it. So you don't have to worry about that. If we begin and learn how to stay and operate in the spirit, operate in the love of God that's on the inside of of us allow the spirit of God to take control the way that heartbeat Ali says crucify your flesh and stop allowing the flesh to lead you stop allowing the flesh to control you but command your soul to bless the Lord that anytime a situation arises that the spirit of the Lord that is in you will rise to the top you can do this you do it with the people that you love you do it with the people that you like and so it's now time that we operate in love and we love those those people that are hard to love because something is going on with them. They are broken. And so we're not going to um, fight fire with fire. No, we're going to fight fire with love. We know that people don't wake up just to be mean, just to do that. Something happened. Something is wrong. And so we're going to allow the spirit of God to arise in us. We're not going to be that old person. Remember when we came into Christ, we began to be a new creation. Old things passed away and suddenly all things were new for us. And so now we have new characteristics and that characteristic that we want to flow all the time is love. It's says love never takes failure as defeat for it never gives up. So we talked about yesterday about the 70 times seven. So we never give up on a person when they don't want to um, apologize, when they don't want to repent for what they've done. We never give up because Christ never gives up on us. Imagine your life if Christ would have turned his back and said, I'm done with you. And so we operate the way that Christ operates. And so we never give up. Love never stops loving. I'm going to say that again. Love never Never stops loving. So love never gives up on a person. So in forgiveness, we are walking in the depths of God's love. God, God's kind of love allows true forgiveness, which means this, I'm releasing the debt of an apology. So if you never say, I'm sorry, that's okay. I'm going to continue to love you. I'm going to continue to pray for you. God's kind of love allows true forgiveness, which means this, I'm now releasing harboring ill feelings of resentment and hurt hurt and anger. You know that stuff where I said, you know, Pastor G, you have no idea what they did to me. I'm releasing that because it does not matter what they did to me. God loves me. God is going to handle it. And I'm praying that God will heal their brokenness. And lastly, true forgiveness in God walking, operating and love me. I'm releasing that offender. I'm not holding it against you. I'm not going to bring it up when I see you. I'm going to continuously pray for you. I'm going to act as if it never happened. I'm going to switch my brain. I'm not going to let my emotions lead me. I'm not going to act like a little kid and want to fight fire with fire. I'm not going to act like a little kid. You did this to me, so I'm going to do that to you. No, I am an adult and I will portray Jesus Christ. Christ loves me. Christ saved me. Christ forgives me. And guess what? I'm going to do the same things for others. So all this is included in making a quality decision to have a heart 
that forgives. Amen. I'm going to start right there today. We'll pick it right back up tomorrow. I want a heart that forgives. That's the daily dosage for today. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website, GodWantsMeWhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say, God wants me whole and I am. Again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. Go out there, have a spec well amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. If I don't see you tonight in walking in wholeness, email me for the Zoom link, Regina at GodWantsMeHold.org so you can be a part of the session that we're having tonight on Zoom. And guess what? We are are four days away, four days away of the gathering of hearts on Sunday mornings. Check out the um, God Wants Me Whole social media platform. You'll see the wonderful video done by um, Alexis Wilder. She did a great job on that video and you'll see the flyer with all of the pertinent information. Again, I love you guys a bunch and if I don't see you tonight on Zoom, I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. as we pick up I want a heart that forgives. Have a spectacular, amazing day, guys.